Okay, so um, function show comics prep. The purpose of this is to prepare to start to display the comics in question. Now, taking a little detour to look at the documentation, if you take a quick look here, if you go to the web and go to pouchdb.com, remember all of our documentation on how to use pouches here. And we want to go to API. I'll just show you something here briefly. You can go to it if you want or not. But under the API, we've got fetch doc or retrieve a document. We've got the ability to fetch a document. So we've seen this briefly. db.get retrieves a document specifically by the doc ID. So this would get one document at a time, and it, it's based on the ID. In the example here, remember we've got callbacks, promises, and async functions. I want to look at callbacks. But the example is that db.get plus the name of the ID will, will retrieve one document to display it. Well, we, we could use that for getting an individual comic. Let's say a person wanted to search in the database and then find one comic and retrieve one comic. But instead, for the moment, we want to work with a batch fetch. See on the left side here, batch fetch. So multiple documents at once. If I look there, we've got db dot all docs fetch multiple documents indexed and sorted by ID and deleted documents are only included if options key is specified so pouch keeps track of deleted and intact documents uh, and you can actually sort of create like a history of your edited of the edits of your documents uh, but all docs is the command we'll be using instead of get get would only get one document I want all documents which then I can organize and sort and filter we can use some of the cool filtering systems we have in jQuery mobile there's a bunch of options that we could put in but here's the example db.alldocs a couple of options we'll talk about later and then the response is it brings back some of the data uh, the various IDs and such so this is what we're going to use db.alldocs to get the comics from the database. In our code, just as a note, we could say uh, to get one uh, document, db.get. You put its ID there to get all documents, TV, uh, all docs. So all docs is what we're going to use in a moment. I want to retrieve all of the comics at this point. So just for the notes, I'll put it there. The way we'll do this is uh, we're going to retrieve all of the comics, sort them alphabetically to then display them in a table on screen. If you've taken our other classes of HTML and such, you've probably learned about tables. And perhaps you might have learned about the wrong way to use tables. If you've been in web design a while, in the old days, people would often use a table to create designs. Uh, you don't want to do that anymore. You want to use a table for tabular data. You want to use a table for rows and columns of information. Just like the ad codes here, these are rows and columns. This is a table. The point, traditionally, of an HTML table is rows and columns of information, which it can be styled with colors and all that cool stuff, which we'll do later. Um, not for design. It used to be in the old days you'd make a table and you'd make a cell on the table here and a cell here and a cell here. <coughs> you'd make different cells in the table to put my logo here and my sidebar here and all of that. You don't do that anymore. You don't use tables for design. You use CSS for design. So we're going to use a table to display our data. All docs. Oh, actually, sorry. It's lowercase all docs. It's just a comment, so it doesn't matter. But for the notes, 
That's correct. So we'll say db all docs going to have options first of all and we're seeing that the options for pouch are in JSON format inside of curly braces so in quotes first I'll say here ascending true let's get the data out of the database and organize it alphabetically and it organizes by the ID we're saying true, ascending A to Z. So this will alphabetize the comics based on their ID A through Z. We can further sort later. But here we're pulling out the data, comma, another option, include docs true. Actually, no no quotes. I think it'll work okay with quotes, but just to do it correct, sorry. No quotes on true. It's a boolean, not a string. So include docs true, ascending true. Technically, when we pull data out of the database using all docs, it, <coughs> it would only retrieve the IDs. You could further use that for some other filtering and sorting operations. For the moment, to start off with, we're going to say include doc. So also include the data related to that ID. Uh, also give me all of the fields I created, the title, the publisher, the year, and all of that. If I didn't have include docs, it would be very boring. It would just be the IDs of the comics. So for our notes get all comics in alpha order A to Z including each field of the doc so what did we have we had title year etc that's what include docs is saying. When we had db.put, we had uh, some sort of parameter, comma, a callback function. We're going to do the exact same thing here. So after that uh, curly brace of the JSON um, formatted options, we're going to have our function open close parentheses, open close curly brace. And remember, we've always got this failure or success that happens when trying to do any of these pouch operations. Failure, success. Okay, let's try to get all the documents, alphabetize it A through Z, give you the, all of the data of each document, and then we either have a failure or a success. So I'm going to break those curly braces into the next line to deal with if there's a failure, do something, or else there's a success, do something else. So I'm going to break that. This curly brace closes the curly brace of the anonymous function and might as well add a note at the end of that line so that we don't lose track of what that is and say and all docs retrieving the initial <coughs> comic data comic data
So whenever we try to do a pouch operation, we get a failure object or a success object. Uh, we'll deal with what happens when we get failure first. If failure, else success. So that's for end of our if else if the operation worked or not. And as we've done before, we'll deal with our failure first. If there was a failure in, in, the, um, in the operation of trying to get the data, uh, we'll deal with that. For the moment, what we can do is give ourselves some console output to give ourselves a message in the console. Error retrieving from the database. And then we'll just output we'll just output the object. So we have to read in we have to read in the console it might give us some feedback to see well what happened. It, does the does that object not exist? Uh, does that record in the database not exist? Is the database connection broken? Something's happening. We'll look in the console. We have to look up the documentation and then figure out our error. Okay, so the else part is success su successfully uh, getting the data. And as the example of what we could see, we have success dot rows. zero doc. So the documentation in Pouch, the screen that I just had in Pouch, explains what this is. But this is, if I successfully get all of the data from the database, OK, it's all stored in this success object, basically. So I have several rows of data in my database. I have several comics in my database. Here I'm saying, let's look at the first comic in the database. Because this is an array syntax, it starts with 0 as the first comic. If I wanted, you know, that's the uh, sixth comic. So here the first comic. There is a document. There is a record. There is a comic in this row. This is the first <coughs> document in this row of data. And further, we have all of the we have dot and all of the fields that we created, such as title. These are the ones that we created when we created our comic object early on. Remember, we had title. Um, publisher, etc. Just to divide that, remember the trick about dividing your screen. Let's see somewhere at the top over here just to show you. When we saved the comic, we prepared it all into a bundle of data right here. When we had a comic, or a temp comic is made out of an ID, a title, a number, a year, a publisher, notes. That's what I'm ultimately referring to right here. So just to see if this is working, um, we'll save it and run it in a moment. And you need to have at least one comic saved. 
uh, what, what this should say is in the console, show me the title of this document, the first document in my database. Show me the title, or show me the publisher, or the year, or the number, or whatever. So let's uh, save it and run it just to see what we get here. Remember, you can also, before running it, if you, if you think you might need it, remember to view your error list just in case. You can ignore that Cordova one. I've said that several times. You can ignore the warning, we can't find the Cordova JS file. If you get any other JavaScript errors, of course, you want to fix that. <coughs> you want to fix that. And I'm going to run this on my browser. I have at least one comic saved in my database. Oops, let's see what's this. Cannot read property doc of undefined. Hmm. Success rows zero. Let me double check that. Did anyone else get an error too? Okay, let me just double check that. Success rows zero doc title. Let's reason this out. So it is hitting 390, which is the else, which is that there was a success. It is not saying error retrieving from database. It isn't hitting that, so there is no failure happening. Uh, the else should be happening. Then we're saying success rose doc. Did I misspell that? No, that's success. Success rose. Rows should be plural. That's what I have. Success dot rows brackets zero dot doc. Let me just confirm that I save a comic or not. I think I, I think I've logged in with an account with no comics. Let me just confirm that. Oh yeah, that's it. So I've logged in with an account with no comics, and okay, I can't retrieve any comics because there's no comics. Okay, so I'm going to save a comic because I logged out of one account. Okay, so I've saved one comic. I'm going to run that again. So um, I forgot that I logged out of an account with no comics. So does everyone see a result there? Question? Yeah. Um, is it only supposed to show the last comic that was in? I put four in. It's no, it shows the first one because, first one. well, it shows the first one in alphabetical order because see what we've done. We've said all docs, retrieve all documents, give them to me in alphabetical order A through Z, true, and then show me the zero with the very first one alphabetically. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if I wrote something in the publisher field, which I didn't in my case, but if I wrote something in the publisher field, it should then show you the publisher that you saved in that data of that object. Now, I only have one comic at the moment, so if I try to put one, that's going to be the second one. 
right? Because 0 and 1 is the second comic. Show me the year of the second comic. I have no second comic. So perhaps before fully testing this, uh, you might want to save three or four comics. Try to save a few comics, three or four of them, just to have some data to look at. And right here, I'm going to put this, and I know this will be an error, but that's OK, because I want to save comics. OK, so I've saved some comics into the database to be able to use some of these fields and rows and such. So I, I saved four or five comics. Um, and then so right here. So I said, from my second comic, give me the year. So there it is, 1950. Now I, I saved four comics, there are one, two, three. I say, okay, give me the year of the fourth comic. That's the that's the fourth comic, the year. So this whole else is you try to retrieve all the comics. There was no failure. Here's one of the years of one of the comics. Uh, the big idea is that this is going to be our syntax. We have this success object which has all the data. Uh, let's look at row. Uh, let's look at row or the the fourth uh, one two three zero one two three the fourth comic. Uh, you can also look at it in terms like this. So I'm going to comment out that previous one for a moment, success again. This time simply rows. See what happens if you do just rows. If I was saying uh, brackets 0, I'm saying uh, show me the first comic. Well, all comics are in this uh, object, success rows. So try to take a quick look to see what happens in if you say, show me all of the rows. Obviously, if you have more than one comic saved, this testing will be better. Because if you only got one comic saved, there's not a lot, a lot to look at. So try to save three or four or five comics before we go on. You can just, of course, save them as gibberish or actually s send them for real. In my case here, OK, I've got four items in my array. I've got four comics saved so far. When I wrote simply console log success.rows, it says you've got four comics saved so far. I open that up. Uh, there's my first comic, second, third, and so forth. So alphabetically by IDs, CAT, DOG, IRO, SQU. I'm seeing the IDs there. Question. OK, let me check your code right now. So at this point, we should be confirming that we're starting to see the data, then we're going to massage it and make it look nice.
So let's go on at this point. What we've got is that the console log is showing all of the data in a very raw sort of format, which we then need to uh, display on screen. Well, uh, this uh, is all of simply preparing the data. Next, what we want to do next line is we'll say pass the data to a function to display as a table. So we're going to pass this data into its own function. We haven't created this function yet, so we're going to name it here function show comics table. <clears throat> okay, well, we're going to pass the, the data, the, we're going to pass all of the data into this function. So inside of the parentheses, success.rows, we confirmed just a moment ago that console log showed all of the data as raw array data. Great. So then we're going to pass it into a function we're going to create in a moment, function show comics table. Uh, to kind of clean up, as I was saying previously, to kind of clean up our uh, our console output, instead of just outputting it like that, kind of without much context, I'm going to go back and, and write a little bit of string data as well, saying maybe raw array data, like that. So our console will say that plus the raw data, so that as I see in the console and I'm testing it, what we create next will make sense with what's already there. Okay, so pass the data to a function to display as a table. This function for the moment is is done. This prep comic function is complete. All we wanted it was for it to retrieve all docs, to check if there was errors or not, give me all of the data alphabetically. Okay, then we'll pass it into a new function. So outside, find a spot outside of your function show comics prep. And here we will create a new function. So in my case, line 398, function that takes the data, takes the raw data, passed to it and builds a table to show it. The one I just set up there, function show comics table. So this expects a, um, a, a, an argument to be passed in. We're going to pass the raw data into this function to make the table and then display it on screen. Uh, that's what we set up there. Get the data, do all docs, pass all of the data into that function. Here it is here. Here's the data passing in. So in this next table is where we start to um, create the table to display it on screen. This is going to be very familiar uh, when we did the assessment from part two where we created where we displayed things on screen via JavaScript. So we're going to create a variable in here. We're going to call it str like before. But this time instead of starting it as as an empty 
instead of starting it as an empty um, string, we're going to start it as actual HTML. Create a, an object that begins our paragraph and table, our HTML. So similar to the assessment, we had a bunch of data that we wanted to display on screen. We had all this JavaScript data we wanted to display on screen. In the assessment, we created a string, an object that is full of what will be displayed on screen. This is going to be a paragraph, and inside of the paragraph is going to be a table. And the table is going to have rows and columns of, of, the, uh, of the data. Now I want to close the table here. So then we'll do string plus equals quotes, close the paragraph, or end the paragraph, and end the table. And the paragraph and table. <clears throat> Be very sure to have written a plus equals here. This again relates to string concatenation. We're adding to that variable. We're adding to the object. Whenever we have simply equals, as I've said before, basically you take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. You assign this to this. Technically, you, you remove, you dump out what's in here to put that into it. We need the plus equals here so that we add first this part code in the middle, and then also add the final closing paragraph and closing table. You have that as an equal, your, your app will completely break, because all of, the, all of the stuff that we will write from here to here will be dumped out and will be replaced with a closing paragraph and table, which doesn't make sense. So make sure you've got plus equals. We're adding to what the string already had. And obviously, we don't have the VAR keyword because whenever we have the VAR keyword, it's create a new variable. No, we're going to use the pre-existing variable, add to it the closing HTML. Next line here. Actually, I think I'm just going to tab it. I kind of liked it. I like it tabbed over for readability. Uh, in between the beginning and ending of the table, we're going to we're going to construct rows and columns. Well, there's, uh, there's going to be dynamically generated content based on, I've got three comics saved so far, so I need three rows. Later, I'm going to have 20 comics saved, so I'm going to need 20 rows. Later, I'm going to have 500 comics. I want 500 rows. So those rows are going to be, uh, be dynamically generated. But first, we're going to have the very first row of data, just like in, in the sign-in sheet here, or the add codes. You have your very first row, student name, ID number, access code, student label. And then down a column to the first person, the second person, etc. So we need a very first row that does not change for our headings. And we have rows that will dynamically change depending on the data. So we're good at yes. Should the index be immersed in the menu? Uh, yes, good point, yes. Um, yes, I missed that, sorry. It should be backwards because we're closing, we're starting the table, it's the inner element, then the outer element. Yep. It probably would have worked, but this is more correct. Yes, good point, thank you. Opening, closing, opening, closing, like that. So we're going to build the first row of the table. 
quotes. Table row. The very first row of the table will have the headings of the comics we're displaying. So we have TH for headings. In the first heading, we'll have title. We're not going to display all of the data in this table. We're going to display some of the basic data of the table, and then sort of a button like View More. Because we have the title of the comic, the year of the comic, the publisher, the number, and all of that. It's going to be a cluttered table. So I, at the moment, I want to display the title of the comic, the number of the comic, and then an option where they can get more info. Info. I'm going to separate these out just a little bit, which might make it more readable. The very first row of the table, table row, will have a table heading, <coughs> a column of title. Then the next column will have the number of the comic. And then the next one, the next column, will have an info button to click to show you more info. The year of the comic, the publisher of the comic, the notes. Eventually we're going to take a photo of the comic or scan the barcode. So I want to display all of that. I don't want to clutter this screen up with all of that info. If they want to see the detailed info of a particular comic, there will be then a button to click. So create an object that begins our HTML paragraph and table. We'll say then add to the string or object, add to the object. Uh, a row that includes the headings of the table. Then and the paragraph and the table and paragraph. So in between, let's make a note so far, show each entry of data here. This is going to need an algorithm. We'll get to it in a moment. You see the, the logic of it here. We're building an object that is going to encompass uh, dynamic as well as static data. First is the static data. There will be a paragraph with a table. There will be a certain row. Those three will not change. What's going to happen here in line 406 or so, this is where it's then going to build the first row. I've got four comics so far, so it's going to build four rows. Once I've added a, a fifth comic, it will automatically add a fifth row. Let's say I delete a comic from the collect, I delete two comics from the collection, it's going to drop down to three comics. So what's going to happen inside of here will be the dynamic part. Eventually, we'll come back to that, eventually all of that will then be displayed on screen. So we've got $L div 
show comics table. Well, that's the um, that's the JavaScript object. That's the jQuery based object we created earlier today that represented the HTML div that's waiting for us. We're going to write some HTML into it. I'm going to write that string, that object. So this function is, we've got some comic data to display. Let's build a table to show the data, then show the data on screen. We're putting all of the pieces of that data into a table, putting it all into this object. Okay, on in the HTML file, we have something that's represented by that. Let's write some HTML, and the HTML that we're writing is all of this. So it'll process the HTML plus the dynamic stuff we'll do in a moment, and it'll display it on screen. So in our note, we can say in the uh, div in the HTML file, write some HTML, or use the HTML method to write the comic info. Uh, we should be able to save and run it to sort of see if we're on the right track. The algorithm that will happen in here will we'll need a little bit of effort to, to concoct. Uh, but at this point, if we run it, we should see a very basic table. When you go to View Comics, you should see a basic table that at least has one row with title, number, and info. Nothing below it yet, because we haven't done it yet. But up until this point, we've been setting ourselves up to get the data from the database, start to create a table, eventually display it on screen after we've done the dynamic part. But for the moment, go ahead and save your code and run it and see if you get any errors or see if you see the basic table in the View Comics screen. Let me check mine. <clears throat> we'll do a break in a moment, and uh, we'll check people's code. Title info. Actually, let's do one thing here before we take our break. Uh, table um, border equals single quotes one. We're going to make this look nice via CSS, but for the moment to see it, tables are invisible by default. Uh, just to see the edges of the table, let's add this part here. Add the border property single quotes, or else that would break our double quotes. Remember that whole issue. Uh, that's going to come back when we actually create the dynamic data in a moment. Uh, but make sure these are single quotes, because remember, if you do double quotes here, it thinks, OK, you broke that. You wrote some HTML, and then you ended it, and then you have a number one floating there, and then you continue it. No, you want single quotes so that it stays within the whole double quote entity. Okay, save it and run it. Now you should see some edges on that table. 
If that worked, we, we'll take a break. If it didn't, we'll, we'll fix it. Let me, con let me confirm a mine. So if I view comics, there it is. So that, of course, <coughs> we'll style that, of course, but that's going to be our first row. And in the title column, we'll have the names of the comics. In the number column, the number of the comic. And then on the info, there will be a button that you can click that will then pop up to show all the rest of the info. The year, the notes, the photo, the barcode, whatever we saved to a comic. But at the very least, uh, under View Comics, we're starting to get there. My uh, console doesn't show any errors. Raw, raw array data, OK, whatever. But um, that's what we've got so far. So if it worked, take a break. If not, call me over. It's 8.35. 8 we'll take a break until 8.45, then we'll go on.